And now a message from our Northfield Mayor and City Council. Hello, Northfield. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, Northfield. Hello, Northfield. Hello, Northfield. Hi, I'm David DeLong from the Northfield City Council. I'm Northfield City Council member Susie Nicassian. I'm City Councilor Clarice Graybaugh. I'm City Councilor at Large Brad Ness. I'm Erica Zweifel, your third ward city councilor. I'm your ward four city councilor, Jessica Peterson White. I'm your mayor, Rhonda Pownell. The program you are about to see was prepared before the arrival of the coronavirus pandemic to our community. We were hoping to share this information with you in person in the beautiful Craigham Performance Hall at Carleton College campuses. Instead, with everyone's safety and health in mind, we found a different way of bringing this to you. We feel this information is still important to share with you. With everyone's safety and health in mind, we've found a different way of bringing you this information. We'll go over our accomplishments from the last year and talk about what we're still working on in 2020. We know this has been an unusual and uncertain time. But know that Northfield is still working for you. Things may be done differently. But our dedicated staff is still working to deliver the services you've come to expect. We hope that everyone is remaining safe and healthy. Be kind to yourself and others. We'll get through this together. This is different for everyone, but we're all in it together. And now, here's the 2020 Northfield State of the City Address. gentlemen, welcome to the Northfield State of the City Address. Please welcome Northfield Poet Laureate, Rob Hardy. Hi, I'm Rob Hardy, the Northfield Poet Laureate. And this poem is called Bloom. I'd like to dedicate it to the class of 2020. Crowds of wildflowers gather in the woods. Leaves break from the isolation of buds and spring pours green over everything as if this were a normal year. But nothing is normal. We don't even know what normal will mean. The trees uncork their buds and fizz and flower, but there is nothing to celebrate. No prom couples pose among the blooms, no caps and tassels released like pollen into air. And yet we are still together, here in the shelter of each other's care. Paper hearts blossom in our windows like gardens, open to all the possibilities of spring. Even this year's flowering will ripen into fruit. Thank you, Rob. What a great way to kick off our show. Even in the midst of this unusual time, there is hope. Nature reminds us as spring breaks forth, pouring green over everything and flowering that ripens into fruit that we can be here for one another in the shelter of each other's care. I'm Northfield's Mayor Rhonda Pownell. Welcome to the 2020 State of the City Address. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our community members who are participating via Spanish interpreters. I've had the honor of serving our community over the past 12 years. During that time, it's been a distinct privilege to serve alongside highly dedicated, intelligent, and courageous city council members and city staff. We are blessed to have a dynamic and vibrant community that every day works to provide an excellent quality of life where all can thrive. And I'm Ben Martig, your city administrator. I've been in Northfield for four years and lead our staff in implementing the strategic vision and goals for our community in partnership with our elected leaders, including the mayor and city council. We are fortunate to have a community of strong leaders and a staff that is dedicated to delivering excellent and innovative city services. Thank you for joining us to hear about the state of the city. This is our chance to celebrate our public servants, volunteers, and what we've done as a city this past year. 
It will also give us time to reflect on the things we are still striving for and our commitment to a better future. During this program, we'll recognize the hard work of past and current councils. We will announce awards recognizing the excellent and creative work done by board and commission members, city staff, and students. The mayor will highlight the core functions of the city, things that if done right often go unnoticed, present work we've accomplished over the last year, and lay out the future intentions of the city. Before we get rolling in the program, I need to thank individuals and organizations that made this program happen. First, thank you to Carleton College for their president, Steve Poskanzer, for offering up the Crackham Performance Hall for the event. Even though we couldn't use it this year, we very much appreciate your staff's support. I'd like to thank our team in the city's communications department for their work in helping to put together this program, as well as thank all of our fantastic sponsors. I want to give a special thanks to XL Energy for generously offering to provide refreshments for this program. We'll enjoy our in-home refreshments this time around and look forward to enjoying those refreshments together next spring for the 2021 State of the City Address. And now I'd like to invite our other sponsors to say a few words. Lisa Peterson of the Northfield Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism, as well as Barry Carlson, President of the Northfield Rotary Club. Lisa, take it away. Good afternoon. My name is Lisa Peterson, President of the Northfield Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. The Chamber is proud to partner with the City of Northfield for the State of the City Address. The Chamber's mission is to lead in the creation, promotion, and enhancement of a healthy business environment for the Northfield area, and I believe that by working together, we can accomplish just that. This has been a crazy year, hasn't it? Throughout the last couple of months, I've seen acts of extraordinary kindness in our community coming together to support each other like no other. We have seen our chamber's front lobby turned into a pickup location for mask and isolation gown making supplies. We have watched our small businesses reinvent themselves to figure out how to best provide their goods and services now that traditional shopping methods are out the window. And we have all learned the importance of social distancing. That being said, some of the great events that you look forward to during the summer months have had to be postponed. We have been seeking the guidance from our state leaders and our partners at the city and the police department to determine when it will be safe to hold events like crazy days and girls night out again. The chamber has been supporting our business community throughout the pandemic in many ways, including the Chamber Bucks program. Each year, over $25,000 flows through the nearly 300 businesses that accept Chamber Bucks throughout Northfield and Dundas. In addition to the Chamber Bucks program, we have also created an online store where we have over 50 different gift cards for sale from local businesses. I am proud to say that once again, our community has come together to rally and support our small businesses. Since mid-March, you have helped keep over $23,000 in our community by purchasing Chamber Bucks and gift cards on our e-commerce site. To find out more information, please visit our website at www.northfieldchamber.com. Thank you, stay safe, and be well. Welcome to Northfield's State of the City Address. It is our distinct pleasure and honor as Northfield Rotarians to be one of the co-sponsors of this event. Northfield Rotary is organized around the principle of service above self. We are committed to the promotion of ethics and honesty in our personal and our professional lives. Our four-way test goes like this. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Northfield Rotary is a forward-leaning organization that invests in Northfield and the larger global community, working to build peace and understanding through service and personal relationships. We are known for our dynamic youth exchange program, one of the most robust in the country, if not in the world. 
We're also known for our effort to eradicate polio, and we're getting close. It's just in one or two countries now. Our service projects, both local and international, support many communities. Currently, we are doing a, a water project in Guatemala and working with the Guatemalan community to bring them water for the first time. We just finished up a project with Northfield Union for Youth in remodeling the key. And right now we've taken a large emphasis in climate change, working on a climate summit and other things around climate, but also introducing two new EV charging stations to Northfield. The second one's gonna be put up real soon. We are serious about the work that we do as Rotarians, but we enjoy doing it also. I'd like to introduce you to our 12 students who were traveling internationally from Northfield. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, they've all had to return back to Northfield. We also had six students studying abroad with us here in Northfield. Three of them have returned to their countries and three remain with us till the end of the year. Hopefully we'll be able to show you some of their pictures right now. For now, stay safe, enjoy the rest of the event, and thanks for being such a valuable member of the Northfield community. We want to recognize and thank former mayors and councilors for leading the community to where it is today. We are grateful for their hard work and dedication. Each city council has its own priorities and way of doing things, but throughout the years, we've all been working to carry out the city's vision as an open, safe, and welcoming community. Some former members have moved on to different careers and communities but some are still serving our community in other ways and on other committees. Thank you all for your service to Northfield. I'm honored to serve with a city council that is so dedicated to serving Northfield. Each of them brings unique perspectives and insights to leading our community. Even though those perspectives can be at odds sometimes, we are stronger together working together, exploring, debating, and even disagreeing improves our ideas, brings attention to risks, and leads to enhanced trust among us. We are committed to improving our community. Thank you to my council colleagues for your leadership and service. Boards and commissions play a critical advisory role to the city council and city staff. They create new initiatives and work on solutions to our community's priorities. As you can see, we have tremendous community engagement. We have 14 boards and commissions and even a few more special committees. In all, there are about 200 volunteers serving on them. Thank you for your service to the community. to introduce to you our current president pro tem Clarice Graybaugh. The president pro tem is an assignment chosen annually by the city council and assists the mayor as needed. Councillor Graybaugh joined the city council in 2018 and represents the city at large. We also have Brad Ness who served last year as our president pro tem. Councillor Ness joined the city council in 2016 and also represents the city at large. Councillor Graybaugh and Councillor Ness will be leading our awards and recognition section of the program at this time. Thank you, Mayor Pownell and Administrator Martig. It's been a pleasure serving on the council this year, and it is an honor to be in this new role. Thank you, Mayor Pownell, City Administrator Martig, and President Pro Tem Graybaugh for your service to the community. Northfield is a great place, and we appreciate your leadership and commitment. And now we're here to announce the winners of this year's Mayor for a Day essay contest. This contest is open to fourth and fifth grade students, and it was very hard to narrow it down this year. We had a lot of entries. Three winners were selected from fourth grade and three from fifth grade. 
Each year we ask a different question, and this year's question started with some background information that Northfield has 35 parks, 564 acres of land, 23 miles of trails, 22 playgrounds, four park shelters, a swimming pool, an ice arena, and a skateboard park. So the question was, if you were mayor for a day, what kind of park or recreation space would you create and why? And now, here are our winning entries. Hi, my name's Olivia Simon, and I'm a fourth grade student at St. Dominic School. If I were mayor for a day, the kind of park I would create would be a play park. A place where kids, parents, and even teenagers could hang out. A park with swings, jungle gym stuff, a pool, a surfing pool, and a track. I would create a space like this so everyone can have fun. Parents can walk around the tr track while kids, kids are playing, surfing, or swimming. The kinds of activities people could do in this park are bike, walk, skateboard, rollerblade, or roller skate around the track. They could play on their play set, which would include a diving board, with a pit of sponge squares underneath it and a rope to climb up it. It would have a giant hand sculpture that people can climb on. There would be swings that make you feel like you're in the ocean. I would call them water swings. There would be a basketball court, a wave pool, and a super, super cool surfing pool. The last thing in my amazing park would have is a paint, painted wall that you can play tennis against or do I spy by finding the images on it. This space would make life better in Northfield because it would be close to everyone's house so it would help the environment because people could walk to it. Bye! Hi. I'm Logan. I'm in the fourth grade. If I were mayor for a day, I would make a family park with a few slides, a swing set with one baby swing, a leather bridge, monkey bars, a zip line, one tire swing, a gazebo, one statue of pepperoni pizza, and a restaurant for the homeless. The time the restaurant is open is 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. The menu. Sunday is hamburgers, Monday is mac and cheese, Tuesday is chicken, Wednesday is pizza, Thursday is steak, Friday is any meal on the menu, and Saturday is grilled cheese sandwich. And that's the park I would make if I were mayor for a day. Hi, I'm Eliza and I'm in the fourth grade. If I were mayor for a day, I would make a rainforest park for everyone to enjoy because I love rainforests and I think it would be nice to have one here in Northfield to show everyone what nature actually is. Rainforest Park would have an observing tower with binoculars you can borrow to look out over the canopy. But if you wanted to, you could go to the lower two levels, the understory and the fourth floor. Just over the canopy, there would be a greenish colored bridge. Its color is made to match the colors of the leaves below. It would be two miles long, ending at the other end of the park. There would be bridges in the understory and just above the fourth floor. When walking on the bridge, you could see all the animals that live in the rainforest, but they would all be fake. They would all be fake because the real animals would die in this frosty northern climate. Rainforest Park would make life better for everyone in Northfield because everyone would get a chance to see what nature actually is, and maybe people would start helping the earth instead of killing it. Hi, I'm McKenna Mullenhauer, and if I were mayor of Northfield for a day, I'd create an electronic music park. There would be color-changing tiles all over. When kids went on them, they would play music. There would also be musical instruments for kids to play. How would this help Northfield? Well, when kids stepped on them, it would create music that would create solar power energy to help create energy in houses. Also, it would get the children of Norville to be able to listen, create, and get familiar with music. In the beginning, it may be expensive for Norfield, but in the long run, it would cost the city of Norfield and the citizens of Norfield less money. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my Mayor of the Day essay. Hi, 
I'm Odin and I'm a fifth grader. If I were mayor for the day, I would build an everything in the area sanctuary so that so that if anything in the area of Northfield is injured or hurt, someone could bring it to the sanctuary so it could be safe there. This would include birds, reptiles, mammals, fish, amphibians, etc. There would be naturalists there to present at the sanctuary so that they could nurse the animals who were in need back to health and educate the people of Northfield on environmental issues and its impact on animal welfare. If the in the presentation, the naturalist will show the people the, the rescued creature and talk about its habitat. The people would be able to touch or stroke the animal if not poisonous or deadly. It would make life better for all living things because all lives would matter. Hi, my name is Sophia Johnson, and today I'm reading my essay for the Mayor for a Day essay contest. If I was mayor for a day, I would build a woman's air service pilot statue because I want to remind people that in a time of inequality, women bonded together to create a family. When we needed it most, women fought in a men's army to protect people who were not fair to them. Wasps didn't fight to prove a point. They did it because it was the right thing to do. I want to build a statue of them to remind us all that women fought so they could fly. Congratulations to the mayor for our day winners. I think we have some future park board members to recruit. The essays will be posted on the city's website and social media. They will later be displayed at City Hall and the Northfield Public Library. Good evening, I'm Matt Hillman, superintendent of the Northfield Public Schools. It is my privilege to present the 2020 Youth Ethical Leadership Award to Northfield High School senior, Jose Gonzalez Ramirez. I've seen Jose around school for the last several years but really got to know him over the last year as a fellow member of the Northfield Promise equity team. He immediately impresses you with his thoughtful nature and his ability to juggle a host of activities and his schoolwork. As his teacher, Sarah Swan McDonald wrote in her nomination form, Jose is a dedicated, intrinsically motivated young leader, not afraid of asking questions, probing for information, and working hard. This award is presented to a Northfield youth who demonstrates innovation, integrity, leadership, and service. Jose uh, demonstrates these values in his daily life. As a member of the Northfield Promise Equity Team, Jose has been a leader in analyzing issues in our community that have led to inequitable outcomes. I've observed him think through a complex problem, listen to others, and identify potential factors that have led to the issue. He then suggests unique possible strategies to address the problem. He presents these ideas with humility and has the integrity to stand up for his belief while also honoring others' perspectives. He does all of this while demonstrating a sense of wisdom that frankly is beyond his years. Jose is obviously a leader since that word is part of the award name. In addition to his intellect and his work ethic, he possesses incredible charisma. He uses this to help promote school spirit. Northfield High School principal Joe Lear says, Jose is a loud voice of positive support for his classmates and a model for others in the stands. He leads in almost every endeavor he takes on, sports, music, advanced placement courses. He's been a positive leader across the board. Jose demonstrates a spirit of service. He has given back to the student community by being a link leader. Link leaders help ninth graders acclimate to Northfield High School. In short, we need more leaders like Jose. Those who approach leadership with a spirit of service, modeling true humili humility, and being steadfast in their beliefs, while also demonstrating respect for others' ideas. Then he rolls up his sleeves, gets to work, and solves problems in a way where true fairness rules the day. I am inc incredibly proud to present the 2020 Youth Ethical Leadership Award to Jose Gonzalez Ramirez.
Thank you, Dr. Homan and Ms. Vaughn McDonald for nominating me for this award. It is truly an honor to receive this award. As Dr. Homan mentioned, we are both part of the Norfield Promise Equity Team in Norfield, and it has been a fun opportunity to get to know one another and be a part of the change in solving ongoing conflicts regarding equity. First, I would like to say, none of this would have been possible without the support of my family, following my faith, coaches, teachers, fellow peers, and friends. I've learned that it is so important to be true to yourself and be kind to others. Also, I've been involved in my school and community, and I'm truly blessed by the people I've met and made friendships with. As I look back and reflect on my experiences, I feel proud and filled with hope from others. The sky's the limit, meaning I'm just only beginning my adventure. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Hillman. It is truly an honor. Hi, my name is Bruce Anderson. I'm a member of the Environmental Quality Commission and a nominator for the 2020 Board and Commission Member Excellence Award. This award is given to a board or commission member who performs their duties exceptionally well and takes initiative to go beyond expectations of their role. This award recognizes a member who improves or enhances services and quality of work in ways that make a substantial difference for their respective commission or board. It goes to someone who exemplifies professionalism, teamwork, and dedication, advocates for creative solutions to policy problems that exemplify the city's vision and mission, and demonstrates a high ethical standard. It's with great pleasure that I announce that the winners of the 2020 Board and Commission Member Excellence Award are Alan Anderson and Alexandra Miller. I nominated Alan and Alex jointly based on their diligent work co-chairing the Climate Action Plan Advisory Board from January 2018 through the city's adoption of the Climate Action Plan in November 2019. Alan and Alex shared this responsibility admirably. They consistently demonstrated their commitment to fulfilling the, city, the board's obligation to meet the city's strategic objective regarding climate change. They ensured that all board members' voices were fully heard and managed the Climate Action Plan development process in a professional and expeditious manner. They demonstrated respect for city staff and consultants' time and expertise and were instrumental in communicating the board's mission and messages to the community through various outreach efforts. While either Alan or Alex would have made an excellent choice for this award individually, I felt it would be fitting for them to share this award as they work together so well as older male and younger female co-chairs of the Climate Action Plan Advisory Board. The world and our community need positive examples of this kind of intergenerational collaboration. In this case, they work together respectively and productively to move an important community initiative forward. Congratulations, Alan and Alex. Hi, this is Alan Anderson, co-chair of the Climate Action Plan Advisory Board, together with Alex Miller. I'd like to thank the city for this wonderful recognition and thank my co-chair, Alex, for bringing an awful lot of dedication and talent to our task. I want to also thank the other members of our Climate Action Plan Advisory Board who really worked tirelessly to build committees, bring in a tremendous amount of additional community support, and come up with a good plan. And finally, I'd like to thank the mayor and the city council for having the wisdom and foresight to build climate action into the long range plan and then now to adopting our climate action plan. Our kids and grandkids are counting on all of us to get climate action right. And I think this is a good beginning. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Miller and I'm the recipient of this evening's award. I just wanted to say thank you so much. It's an honor to be not only nominated, but also chosen. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to my co-chair, Alan Anderson, who not only um, helped me and mentored me throughout the climate action planning process, but also is the recipient of this award as well. So congratulations to Alan. I also wanted to say thank you to the rest of the members of the Climate Action Plan Advisory Board who gave countless hours and time and their expertise and their futuristic thinking towards this climate action plan. 
I also want to thank the city for being forward thinking in recognizing uh, the need for a climate action plan for the city of Northfield that both includes mitigation strategies to reduce carbon and resiliency strategies to make sure that we're adaptable for climate change impacts to come. Finally, I wanted to thank my partner, Andrew, who was really supportive in me throughout this entire process. Hello, I'm Heather Lorenz. I'm the chair of the Arts and Culture Commission. At the end of February, we presented the Living Treasure Award at a celebration at 50 North. The Living Treasure Award honors individuals and groups who have, over time, made significant contributions to Northfield through or on behalf of arts and culture to enhance the reputation of the city and the quality of life of its residents. We were thrilled to present the 2020 Living Treasure Award to Mac Gimsey. In the words of his nominators, Mac epitomizes all of the characteristics celebrated by this momentous award. A pillar of the liberal arts, Mac is not only an outstanding sculptor, but is a poet, philosopher, art historian, and compassionate man of faith and grace. Creativity feeds Mac's soul, and his commitment to share it has led to teaching and engagement in the lives of our community youth, as well as the hundreds, even thousands of students he drew to his courses at St. Olaf College. Mac's creativity, knowledge, energy, and grand humor are infectious. Congratulations to Mac. My name is Marva de Cantos, and I am the Vice Chair of the Human Rights Commission here in Northfield. This past January, we gathered for our Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration and to honor our Human Rights Award recipients. It seems it was years ago now that we cannot gather together anymore. Uh, at, le at least for now. The Human Rights Award is given to local individuals, groups, and organizations that have demonstrated a long-standing commitment to the advancement of human rights in the Northfield area, either through volunteer or professional efforts. Employees at the uh, Laura Baker Services Association, Aileen Anderson and Jane Overstreet received the 2020 Human Rights Award during the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. community celebration on January the 20th. We believe that their work towards serving those with special needs, combined with their volunteer efforts towards bringing people together who otherwise would never meet or interact, by opening their doors with a Thanksgiving dinner to the community at large and more actions, is in the spirit of what Dr. King encourages all of us to do every day. Thank you. I hope you, you can all join us again next year for the next Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. Over the summer, the city typically holds its annual employee appreciation lunch and announces its Employee Excellence Award winner. The award allows city staff to recognize one another for outstanding work and to honor those who excel in their service to the people of our community. The award is given to an employee who excels in the areas of teamwork, customer service, professionalism, leadership, innovation, and expertise. The 2019 award went to Steve Petrichka. Steve has worked for the city for 18 years. Steve's willingness to take on most jobs, learn where improvements are needed, and mentor new employees is part of the reason he won this award. He is dedicated to plowing snow from streets and paths mowing grass in parks, patching streets with many tons of asphalt, and helping with decorations for winter walk. Congratulations, Steve, on being the recipient of the 2019 Employee Excellence Award. For joining us. I'm your mayor, Rhonda Pownell. It is my honor to serve you and to serve with you during these difficult times while we are dealing with this COVID-19 situation together. 
we still have plenty to be grateful for and hopeful for. It's my honor to share with you the state of the city. We're celebrating the results of the time, energy, and collaboration of all of our residents of Northfield, over 100 city employees, over 200 board and commission members, and the city council. I am so grateful to be part of this process, moving our incredibly talented, engaged community forward in a way that will leave our community in better condition for future generations. We are home to two world-class colleges, a vibrant art scene, a historic riverfront downtown, and a strong business community. We are what many small towns aspire to be. We have quality organizations and are home to many amazing citizens who are actively working to make our town even better and have a strong commitment to a high quality of life for all. The city as a whole is routinely recognized by outside organizations and included on several best in the state and best in the nation lists. Here you can see a few accolades ranking Northfield by the National Council for Home Safety and Security, College Factual, and Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. It is our work together that has achieved these awards. This is certainly not an inclusive list as there are many other polls ranking Northfield schools, organizations, and businesses each year. Our general services encompass the administrative support of the city, including sound fiscal management and operations. The city council annually approves a tax levy amount for the entire community that is needed to provide city services. This amount is then divided among all taxpayers in the community based on their property values. These values are determined by the county and tax rates are set by the state of Minnesota. City taxes are about 34% of your total property taxes in Northfield. The remainder is made up of taxes from the county and school districts. If you look at a few communities in our area, including Dundas, Faribault, and Owatonna, you can see the distribution of property taxes for the school districts in gray, county in orange, and the city in blue. Northfield city taxes are similar to Dundas and Faribault for city taxes shown in blue, but significantly less than Owatonna city taxes for a comparable $160,000 valued home. The vast majority of our city budget funds our police department who ensures public safety and our public works that is responsible for taking care of our streets and parks. The library is another source of significant operating funding and is bursting at the seams with robust materials, programs, and special events. The city has made strategic investments this last year, which included adding an additional police sergeant to ensure the safety of residents and professional responsiveness. We also added some badly needed park and street operators to assist in the maintenance of our streets and for snow removal support in the winter. Additionally, we continue to invest in replacing our infrastructure as well as working to increase the diversity of housing options to serve our community and to grow our tax base through economic development efforts. Even with these new strategic investments in our city services and infrastructure, the City of Northfield continues to have one of the lowest total tax levies in comparison with similar communities. Northfield is 21% below the median peer city, which is $2.7 million less than our current total city property tax levy. That means the city would increase our tax levy about 25% just to be at the level of a typical peer city in property taxes. Northfield has an excellent AA bond rating from Standard & Poor's based on factors such as our economy, debt load, financial performance, governance, and management practices. Just like a credit score for personal loans, a city bond rating provides lower interest rates 
when borrowing money for things like investments in rebuilding our streets or expanding and remodeling our fire station. We are still in the midst of gathering accurate census numbers. This is a count of every person who lives in the United States and its territories. Census numbers are used to determine the number of seats each state holds in the U.S. House of Representatives and how billions of dollars in federal funds are distributed annually for critical public services like hospitals, schools, roads, bridges, and emergency response. That's why an accurate count is so important. Everyone under your roof as of April 1st is counted. This includes friends or family members who are living or sleeping there most of the time. Be sure to count roommates, young children, and newborns, and anyone renting a space in your home. These people are often missed in the census. If you haven't responded yet, please do so. You count, we all count. Culture and Recreation Services encompasses the arts and culture, the library, parks and recreation, the ice arena and pool, and support of the 50 North Adult Community and Wellness Center. The Northfield Downtown Development Corporation and the City of Northfield Arts and Culture Commission unveiled the winning design from their street banner competition. The banners hang on lamp posts along Division Street and Water Street in downtown. The information kiosk at 6th and Division combines the need for street level wayfinding for Northfield visitors with welcoming public art. The kiosk provides a city map, business directory, weekly events calendar, and local news and events that are regularly updated. This is the first public art project funded by the 1% for the Arts Initiative, an initiative that sets aside 1% of public project construction costs to fund public art. Our Northfield Public Library is well used in the community with more than 18,000 active library cards registered. Our library staff have been focusing on programming and outreach. For services to seniors, staff increased the number of programs offered by nearly 45% and for our Spanish speaking community increased programming by 25%. Additionally, library staff had a goal to increase teen services by 20%. Staff exceeded that goal by 150%, in large part thanks to the first full year of the Teen Advisory Board. Expanding library services through outreach is a key initiative in reaching residents beyond the walls of the library. With the purchase of the library's bookmobile through the funding of the full-time outreach coordinator position and using enhanced collection funds, library staff was able to increase library services for an early literacy focus and for services to underserved populations in Northfield. In early literacy outreach programs, we have more than double the programs offered going from 30 to 65 in just this past year. Here is Cece Lindstroth, a local community volunteer providing storytelling at the Riverwalk Market Fair to our youth. Our market fair is a community asset and also draws hundreds daily to our historic downtown. The library is bursting with activities, including live music series in the library atrium. Our little library is really a community center and is a showcase for local talent. The city of Northfield is one of the first age-friendly communities in Minnesota as designated by AARP. Thank you to the many volunteers who completed the age-friendly action plan. Age-friendly has been busy securing partner funding and grants for the action plan initiatives. You can take advantage of these new red chairs designated for our older adults at our many outdoor events and activities this summer. The city continues to support 50 North through financial commitments toward the Wellness Center. 
approximately 50% of the cost of the operations for the 50 North Wellness Center are provided by the city. As the owner of the Northfield Community Resource Center, we are currently working with 50 North and the other NCRC tenants and community stakeholders on future uses of the building as existing users relocate to the new Greenvale Community School. We also continue to invest in our youth in Northfield. Northfield has an award-winning Youth on Boards program where our community youth serve on the Mayor's Youth Council, who also track City Council activity and provide the youth perspectives on policy development. We have had over 97 Northfield youth serving on local boards and commissions this last year. Thank you so much to Malia Falland, who helps coordinate this program and develop our future leaders. Northfield is recognized for being a safe community and our police department leads our efforts, including our emergency management services. The Northfield Police Department continues to increase their outreach in the community to improve recruitment of staff across cultural and economic boundaries. Our officers and reserves have increased their participation in career exploration efforts at both the high school and middle school in partnership with both the Northfield Public Schools and TORCH program. In 2019, we recruited and hired a former Northfield TORCH student, first as a reserve officer and then as a police officer. We are excited to add Officer Champagne to our staff and she is already demonstrating leadership as she trains in the department. Our police department continues to provide DARE training in our elementary schools. Here is a graduating class along with our school resource officer, Bart Wies, who is funded in part with our school district. Our police department is a positive presence in our schools and we appreciate the strong partnerships with the Northfield School District. Our police department receives broad community support thanks to the positive relationships with many local partner groups and events. You can see our officers at Healthy Kids Day, Safety Camp, Night to Unite, Shop with a Cop, Christmas Sharing, and more. Our police department embraces the principles of community-oriented policing. Northfield and Rice County agencies continue to expand partnerships and address drug access and addiction and mental health concerns. Northfield Police Department works with city, county, and state level groups to improve response and treatment options, including proposing supporting state legislation. Most of these projects are a result of the work by and grants applied for by the Rice County Chemical and Mental Health Coalition, supported by HCI. The Rice County Trauma and Opiate Response Projects, Treatment Court, Take It to the Box, Crisis Intervention Training, and Tobacco 21 Ordinance are just a few of the collaborations. Public Works is responsible for maintaining our parks, streets, and city buildings. We are a community where infrastructure supports its objectives by proper planning, design, and investment. Snow plowing changed operations based on the community input we received last winter. We have over 87 center lane miles, 126 cul-de-sacs and dead ends, 31 miles of trails and sidewalks, and 2.7 center lane miles of downtown all to take care of in snow removal events. It is truly amazing what our street and park crews accomplish with these snow events. As we look to spring thaw and rains, we know that we are experiencing more regular and more intense storm events. This is requiring us to continually evaluate our stormwater management systems and planning measures as we see climate changing. The City Council has made investments in raising our electrical transformers along the Riverwalk and are continuing to invest in stormwater improvements. 
This past year, the city, along with its refuse hauler, introduced new trash and recycling cart size options and weekly yard waste pickup service. This was in response to hearing from customers that they wanted more options to lower their waste and cost. Reducing waste and recycling also is consistent with our Climate Action Plan goals. We provide regional wastewater collection and treatment services to Northfield and Dundas. Following a series of unfortunate events, the city has made major investments in repairs. The capacity of the treatment equipment has been greatly improved. Redundancies in both equipment and operation are now in place. We want a community that is economically thriving. An expanded commercial and industrial tax base will allow us to keep our tax rates low while investing in public infrastructure and services that our residents expect. Last year, the city through the Economic Development Authority provided small grants to three different businesses for expansion and remodeling. The EDA also provided three large loans to Secure Base Counseling, $50,000, Reunion, $100,000, Fifth Street Lofts, $250,000. Let's take a look at some of the development that's been happening.
as you can see, a lot of development has happened over the last year. Recently, the EDA started a three-year pilot program for facade improvement for downtown businesses. This program is designed to encourage downtown building owners to reinvest in the exterior of their buildings to extend the life of these important structures. This will help keep our downtown area healthy and flourishing. The Northfield Transit Hub project will provide added accessibility for our local workforce. Hiawatha Land Transit, the city's bus transit provider, has identified the station as a key priority in increasing bus ridership. The Northfield Line Bus Company will use the station for their daily routes to the Twin Cities. This will lead to the Northfield Depot becoming a regional transportation hub for major employment. The project is expected to spur new economic development and lead Northfield as a regional center and local redevelopment area. This project has been filed in both the Minnesota House and Senate and is included in Governor Waltz's proposed bonding bill. Funds have not been awarded yet. We are continually building relationships and seeking state and federal funds to match local dollars. The $2.5 million request for this regional hub includes public restrooms, a waiting area, 42 parking stalls, and convenient pedestrian and bicycle access. Even though we've had a lot of development, we're still looking to expand opportunities for new business, existing businesses, and tourism. Between 1994 and 2015, the rate of immigrant-owned enterprises in the United States more than doubled increasing from 8.6% to 19.5%. 90 businesses in Northfield are minority-owned businesses, which is 6% of our total. The Socioeconomic Committee is gathering information on assistance for minority immigrant-owned businesses in Northfield to grow our local economy. Northfield is strong economically but we are always seeking perspectives on how we can be stronger. We have hosted our federal legislators on rural economy efforts and showcased our local businesses and entrepreneurs. We must work together to be strong as a community. One of Northfield's primary assets is its housing. We want a community where everyone can afford to live. Staff work closely with our Housing and Redevelopment Authority in all aspects of housing development. One of their main focuses is maintaining the existing housing stock. The Housing and Redevelopment Authority sponsors a fall cleanup event in October every year for the residents at Viking Terrace, Florella's, and Northfield Estates. This past year, residents were able to dispose of rubbish, electronics, mattresses, furniture, metal, and small appliances. The new owners at the Florella's Mobile Home Park are committed to improving and preserving the park for affordable housing. The HRA removed eight abandoned mobile homes at Florella's. Removing the abandoned homes will allow them to make additional improvements to the community, such as updating electrical service, water, and sewer systems. The HRA partnered with Three Rivers Community Action Agency to create Spring Creek 2 townhomes, a 32-unit workforce housing project. Construction of the $11 million project should begin in the fall of 2020. Spring Creek 2 will be located just east and south of the existing Spring Creek townhomes just south of the soccer fields and will consist of two, three, and four bedroom units. We also have 24 new workforce and affordable housing units being constructed with the Maple Brook Townhome Project and negotiated six affordable units to be included with the 5th Street Lofts Project downtown. With city assistance, these developments are making significant forward strides in our affordable housing goals. We will continue to look for ways to increase the number of units for affordable workforce senior housing, and supportive and emergency housing. 
We want a community where infrastructure supports its objectives. Our infrastructure not only includes streets and ways to connect, but also our buildings and recreation facilities. In October, the Northfield Area Fire and Rescue Service held a grand reopening for the newly remodeled fire station. The remodeled station included a 4,650 square foot expansion. The Northfield Area Fire and Rescue Service protects a population of 26,000 people over 144 square miles covering Northfield, Dundas, and all or part of seven surrounding townships. It is a paid on call volunteer organization. The flood proofing of the building and raised flood elevation have made us a more sustainable and resilient community in delivering this critical emergency response service, including rescue and fire. Following the 2008 state aid budget cuts, there was a dramatic decrease in investment in our park system for capital maintenance and improvements. We have 35 parks totaling 564 acres of land, 23 miles of trails, 22 playgrounds, and four park shelters. We also have an aging ice arena and modern basic public swimming pool facility. In January, we mailed out a parks and recreation survey that provided feedback on resident interest on parks improvements. There was support to explore more improvements in the areas of trails, recreation and sports enhancements and riverfront improvements were some of the areas of interest for funding. We can't get away from pothole season. Last winter was especially harsh on our roads with the freeze thaw cycles and multiple days well below zero, which caused many potholes. Over the summer, we laid over 100 tons of materials. We will be continuing to learn how we can invest in infrastructure that lasts as well as keep up with our maintenance needs. Every year, our public works department works on different sections of the city's streets. Street work for 2020 will focus on this area near Carleton College and two other smaller areas. The project improves safety for people walking and biking. Since we adopted the complete streets policy in 2012, we are working to improve all streets in the city so that they can safely serve users of all ages and abilities. We have some new biking traffic lanes that will be used in the project area. It includes a dedicated two lane bicycle pathway with a buffer from vehicle traffic. Other street designs are used throughout the project area. The city council looked at all of the streets and determined which design best meets the needs of all users while enhancing Northfield's sense of place and creating a highly connected multimodal transportation network. After decades of challenges, the city will have a new intersection that will be safer and more comfortable for all users at the intersection of Highway 246 and Jefferson Parkway. The improvements will dramatically reduce backups and delays and add separated pedestrian and bicycle accesses across all intersections that will ensure safe access for the many children, families, and older adults walking and biking in this area. This is a major investment, but the new intersection and new pedestrian crossing at the high school will dramatically increase safety while also accommodating all users at this major intersection now and for decades to come. We thank the school district for their involvement in the design review and financial investment in the pedestrian crossing for this long overdue project. We want to be a community that welcomes everyone, provides services equitably, and is staffed and led by a cross section of our community. To help our staff, current board and commission volunteers and elected officials to do this better, we have been offering and will continue to offer trainings on the topics of equity and intercultural competency. We need to meet people where they are 
and continue to work on understanding our own implicit biases. We all have our own unique personal story and history. Our differences are what make us unique and special. Understanding is key to building stronger communities and addressing inequities. To help people who have been traditionally underrepresented in leadership roles on boards, commissions, and committees across the community, the city along with the school district, HCI, and the University of Minnesota Extension launched a pilot program called Growing Local Norfield Emerging Leaders Program. This program helps build skills, knowledge, and confidence for people to step into leadership roles. We have 16 emerging leaders and 16 mentors participating in the program. We're excited to see where the future takes them. The city has taken several steps in the past year to increase accessibility to our services. We started using Language Line, a translation and interpretation service across all departments. This service allows those for whom English is not a primary language to be connected with an interpreter via phone or video who can help them in their interactions with city staff. Our police and library have also both added staff who can speak more than one language to help provide direct services. We continue to honor and celebrate the diverse cultures and inclusivity of our community with events such as the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day celebration, Hispanic Heritage Month, and Indigenous Peoples Day. 43 neighborhood parties were organized around Northfield for Night to Unite, providing great opportunities for community building in neighborhoods all across the city. The City of Norfield Outreach Coordinator, Angelica Linder, provides library cards and city IDs at St. Olaf College. Norfield was the first community in Minnesota to offer alternative city identification that has been useful for our students and community members. We want a community with a government that works. This means adequate staff to meet demands, improve respect and trust, and improved external communication. As part of our operational effectiveness strategic initiatives, the city assessed the police department staffing levels and organization. The analysis showed that the department has quality staff and operates well in the community, in addition to highlighting areas for improvement. The department will add staff and equipment like body cameras, expand on policies and procedures, and create a strategic plan for the department. All departments will go through similar assessments in the coming years. Our communications with the public have grown tremendously in the last couple years. There are several ways you can get information about what's going on in the city and additional ways for you to give input to influence decisions. We have an online function where you can leave comments on city council agenda items if you can't make it to a meeting in person. We started using a survey tool called POCO to get your input on a number of topics throughout the year. If you get a water utility bill, you should be seeing a quarterly update on topical news and events the city hosts. Norfield Public Broadcasting, NPB, formerly NCTV, is our new community television brand. Visit Charter or Spectrum Public Access Channels 180 and 187 and the NPB website to view our local programming library. We are also expanding video content through other media. City staff and community partners continue to develop programming as local stories unfold. Expect to see a growing amount of video communications in the coming year. We want a community that's resilient and sustainable. We have learned from others and think others will learn from our climate action plan. As St. Paul Mayor Melvin Carter states, good mayors borrow but great mayors steal. After hundreds of hours of work by the Climate Action Plan Advisory Board, numerous volunteers and our consultant partners, 
the Climate Action Plan was completed and adopted in November of 2019 by the City Council completing another strategic initiative. The plan lays out a long-term vision for Northfield to both reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and become a more resilient community that can manage the effects of climate change. The two main goals in the plan are 100% carbon-free electricity by 2030 and 100% carbon-free community by 2040. As part of the plan development, we learned that approximately 85% of the greenhouse gas emissions generated within the city come from building energy use from buildings of all kinds. Increasing building energy efficiency, transitioning to renewably generated electricity, and greatly decreasing our reliance on natural gas and other fossil fuels will be key to reaching our goals. To lead by example in 2020, the city will be reviewing our building energy efficiency and options for moving all of our electricity use to renewables. The city is also involved in the XL Partners in Energy program to promote energy efficiency and renewable energy procurement for homes, businesses, and institutions across the city. Sign up for a home energy squad assessment. They have other options available to assess your home other than an in-person visit. Call them for details or sign up for the Renewable Energy Challenge, which ends June 15th. Participate in the program and you can help us meet our climate goals while saving money in the process. While COVID-19 is taking physical, emotional, medical, and financial tolls on us, and it may take a while to recover, I have great hopes for the future. We still have the same challenges to face and overcome as we did before COVID-19. They may be a little harder and may take longer, but we can and will overcome them together. Most of all, I hope our community can stay focused on the good we can do locally, whether on the priorities in our city's strategic plan or through the many other good community projects we have. Many people are counting on us to work together. We need to find solutions to make housing available to more people, help those struggling with mental health and drug abuse issues, sustainably grow our commercial tax base, better fund and strategically invest in our parks and recreation facilities, find additional funding sources for our roads and bridges, support our local businesses by growing tourism, decrease our carbon footprint, and continue our work to being an open, safe, and welcoming community. For those who've seen the movie Dunkirk from a couple years ago or know military history, you'll understand the value of people banding together to come up with a creative solution to big problems like using lots of little boats when the big boat solution stops working. The British use the phrase Dunkirk spirit. I like to think there's a similar Northfield spirit. Thankfully, our problems aren't nearly as big as the British Navy's in World War II, but that doesn't mean they're not important and worthy of our attention and creativity. I'm grateful for that special community spirit that we've had for generations and that we continue to demonstrate and celebrate together. One of the things that I appreciate about local government is that it's more agile and adaptable than either of our state or federal bodies. Local government can function as a laboratory of democracy, but local government still functions slower than individuals do. I urge your patience. There is great potential and great strength when we work together to accomplish the needs of our community. Strong communities don't just happen, they take commitment. I love this picture of many of our Living Treasure Award recipients. These individuals have been making things happen in Northfield for years. 
And there are many others that aren't in this picture that are also treasures, heroes for the work that they do every day. These Norfield treasures all know our community well, warts and all, and yet they've never stopped giving. You are an inspiration, and I thank you for your endearing love for our community. Board and Commission members, community members, city staff, city councilors, thank you for your partnership, for all that you do each and every day to make our community one of the best places in America to call home. Thank you to all of you that have responded with great compassion, creativity, and generosity during this COVID-19 pandemic. Your selfless acts of service have been nothing but inspiring. During this unusual time, we hope everyone is remaining safe and healthy. Remember to be kind to yourself and others. We will get through this together. Thank you.